salvation. Today is the day of salvation. Mm. We don't know how much time we've got left. Right. So the more that we can share our testimonies with people, the better it is. The, the more people will be in heaven or less in hell. So that's so good. Mm. I just wanted to invite Caitlin up. She's a good friend of mine. So Caitlin sent this text to me this morning without knowing what I was going to be teaching on. And I just wanted you to just share. Okay, so this, I had a dream in March this year. And in this dream, I was um, in my church in Adelaide and I was in my bedroom, my bedroom, which was a cafe, so a place of preparation. And um, as I walked out the cafe, the whole, hall, the, the whole hallway had been flooded right to the roof. And I went in there into the water and I was waiting in the water and there was dead bodies everywhere. It's a really heavy dream, so hold on, just one sec. Okay. Heaps of dead bodies everywhere and I was just praying and singing in tongues, just pushing these bodies as I was wading down this hallway, pushing them out of the way. And then I got to the end and I came out of the water completely dry because I stayed in the spirit in my dream. And I woke up with the fear of the Lord on me um, and I got the interpretation that um, we're coming into a season of the transition from old wineskin to new wineskin and there's gonna be people that aren't gonna make it through the season of judgment that will come. And um, what I shared today was that, um, I feel the fear of the Lord when I say this because I've never shared it publicly, um, only with my leaders at my old church, so I just feel the fear of the Lord. Um, I just said that I feel the convergence of different streams I felt it at the start of this year that there's going to be a convergence of different streams. Um, in fact, I received a prophetic word about the coming outpouring. Um, I'll have to share it with you sometime. <laughs> the Lord will move in a mighty way. However, his judgment, for, it, his judgment will first come, and that comes to the church first. Mm-hmm. We're going to see a lot of dismantling and exposure, and God's released a spirit of discernment on the earth to expose the religious spirit, hypocrisy, and pride. And, and, and hidden sin mm. and compromise within people's lives. Mm. And um, because we've been in this transition from old wineskin to new for quite, quite some time, but that we're, we're stepping over the threshold at the moment. So the level of scrutiny on people's hearts right now, there's a real magnifying glass on it. Um, and some people won't make it. And you'll actually see people not make it. And that was the dead bodies in the hallway that I had to push through. But I stayed in the spirit. Um, so we're in a season now of really fast tracking. There's a, there's a quickening on being trained and equipped to um, understand your identity um, in a resting state from the heavenly from the heavenly place, like seated in heavenly realms, mm. but also warring from that place of rest while the Lord puts that thing on your heart to find the, the compromise within your heart mm. and the, the hidden sin and the places where there's mixture. There's mixture mm. between old covenant and new covenant. Um, and that's old to the new. So, um, yes. But, yes. Thank you, God. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Powerful, powerful. Um, do you guys know what watchmen are? Mm. Yes. There is a season where the Lord is building up watchmen <laughs> and he's giving us direction. He's giving us strategies because he loves us. Okay. The Lord doesn't want his church sitting idle and pretending that they've got a lot of time on their hands because we don't. Mm. So we're going to see a lot of uh, a separating of the true believers with those that aren't. But our thing, our job is to continue to show forth light. Mm. We've been called forth out of darkness into his marvellous light to be salt and light mm. to in this world. Amen. 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 And I, I just love what you shared because the word of God for tonight is quite strong. But sometimes it's got to be. The Lord disciplines those whom he loves and he also encourages us and equips us and enables us mm. so that none of us have to perish, right? Uh-huh. Amen. Amen. How many of you guys have heard the analogy of the frog in a saucepan? Yeah? Yes, this is what the Lord showed me in 
in a vision this morning and said this is the state of the of the world today and a lot of my a lot of my sons and daughters are in this place and he said as the temperature continues to increase around them with sin becoming greater and greater no one's really seen like we've got work churches rising up everywhere people are afraid to speak the word of god but the lord is saying that we as a church have to arise and we're not going to do it in our own strength the lord is mighty he is great he's given us absolutely everything that we need to be able to do the work that he's called us to do amen because how many of you know we're here on purpose for a purpose true Yes, amen, amen. You know, Daniel was brought up in a very evil society and he showed what it's like to be a man of God and continue to pray in the midst of what's going on around him. And this is what the Lord is calling out, people who will worship him in spirit and truth. And I love what you shared, Caitlin, that in your dream you were in the spirit so you were able to come out and, and you were unharmed. Amen. There's no, no place for casual Christianity or carnal Christianity. God is a spirit and he ministers to us in the spiritual realm. So there are things that we need to let go of. If there are things that are hindering us in our relationship with God, this is not a word to cause our grievance or judgment. It's so that we can say, all right, Lord, you've spoken to my heart. There are things that I'm struggling with that you that I haven't completely given over to you. But Lord, here I am. Take my heart and cleanse me and purify me. Amen? Because that's what the Lord does. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So, I don't know how many of you guys are aware, but this world is heading towards where? Better or worse? Worse. It's getting worse. Because that's what the Bible says. It says that it's going to get darker and i believe that there is a one world empire that is rising up to take all men women children into captivity into submission and the tactic that they're using is fear it's an empire that will call good evil and evil good how many of you can see that that happening i mean some of the laws <coughs> that are being passed today. But if we saw this 10 years ago, we'd be like, no way. I was looking up just some, um, some different countries where they allow bestiality and, and that's normal. And now pedophiles have a different name. They're being identified as maps, minor attracted persons. Like, that the church has to arise. Mm. The church has to take a stand. And the only way that we'll be able to make a difference and take a stand is if we are yielded and submitted to his spirit because we can't do it in our carnality. And you know, something that's been made really apparent in these last few months is how weak Christians really are. Like, I'm a part of that as well. How weak we can become. And there's nothing wrong with admitting that and then coming to the Lord coming boldly before the throne room of grace and asking the Lord to impart more of him. He's in us. We have the life of God in us. We need to know our identity. We, know, we need to know who we are. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So God wants us to stand in this hour, to stand when there is all of this darkness that's coming upon this earth. He... He's saying that there is great darkness. The signs of the end of days will happen on a scale and proportion that the earth has never seen. Because we hear this so much, we tend to become desensitized to it and complacent, thinking, well, this is so far away. Right? And it's the frog in the saucepan. We're thinking that there's still a lot of time until that frog dies. But it's closer than what we think. Now is not the hour to play with your Christianity. Now is not the hour to fall asleep. We are a people who have been called to be his hands and feet. Mm. Okay? This is the day and hour that we need to know what our convictions are. Mm. 
if we don't know what our convictions are, something else is going to take that place. The Lord will strengthen us, but he's saying we've got to be prepared. Everyone knows this famous piece of uh, this, uh, scripture, and it's when the disciples ask Jesus, when will we know that the end is near? And we've heard it so many times that it becomes just words, but uh, let's just listen to it tonight. Father, I just want to thank you right now. Father, I thank you for the word that you've given us. I thank you, Lord God, that you don't leave us, Lord God, without counsel, without wisdom, without instruction. We thank you that your Holy Spirit is with us, that leads us and guides us into all truth. Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit would impart into our hearts, Lord God, into our spirit, greater revelation and greater truth, Lord God, that when we walk out of this building, Lord God, that our convictions would be set and sure, our foundation laid, Lord God, we know what we are here for. And Father, we do not lose sight of the goal. Father, I ask this in your precious name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Matthew 24, 3 says, Later Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives. His disciples came to him privately and they said, Tell us when all of this will happen. What sign will signal your return and the end of the world? Jesus told them, Don't let anyone mislead you, for many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah, and they will deceive many. Verse 6. And you will hear of wars and threats of wars, but don't panic. Yes, these things must take place, but the end won't follow immediately. Nation will go to war against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines, earthquakes in many parts of the world, but all of this is only the first of the birth pains with more to come. Now we know that all of this is already happening in the world, yes? yes. Verse 9 says, Then you will be arrested, persecuted and killed. You will be hated all over the world because you are what? You are my? And many will what? Turn away from me and betray me and betray and hate each other, and many false prophets will appear and they will deceive many people. Verse 12, sin will be rampant everywhere and the love of many will grow cold. He's not talking about the world, he's talking about believers. But the one who endures to the end will what? Be saved. And the good news about the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world so that all nations will hear it and then the end will come. Now, I don't know how many people in this room tonight can admit to say maybe we've gotten a little bit dull of hearing. Maybe we've become a little bit too mixed in this temporal realm, in this temporal world. Maybe we've looked at things that are happening and gone, it's not really that bad yet. The Bible says that it will increase rapidly and he wants us to be prepared. Amen? Amen. 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 We can look at Israel throughout history. We can see how, what things happened with them. With their, they didn't have the convictions. They didn't know their God. Though they saw him perform mighty, mighty miracles in the wilderness. As soon as hardships came and their faith got tested, they turned to follow other gods. After 400 years of slavery, right? The Lord heard their cries and he rescued them. But most of them didn't make it out of the wilderness. And I think about Moses. I think about Moses when he was 40 years of age. He killed an Egyptian and he was taken into the wilderness. And then for 40 years, he, he never heard from God. 40 years later, when he was 80, he saw the bush burning and the Lord spoke to him. The Lord speaks to us now. We don't have to wait 40 years. We don't even have to wait a second because he's in you. Amen? Amen. Second Timothy 3, 1 to 5 says, In the last days there will come what? Times of what? Terrible times. There will be terrible times. See, a lot of people think, oh, it's going to get better. COVID's done. COVID's finished. We don't have any more lockdowns. It's going to get better. We've got our freedom. No. Guys, I've got a strong word tonight. It's getting to become more difficult. And if we're not coping well now, 
when things are not as difficult as they're going to get, what's going to happen to us? This is why the Lord wants to prepare us. Amen. Amen. Difficulties only expose the hidden issues. Difficulties will only expose your, your secret your secret inadequacies, what you really believe about God. You can tell a lot about what someone thinks about God when they're going through a difficult time. Amen? That's when the truth comes out. Everyone can praise Him when things are good. But where is your faith when things are not so good? 2 Timothy 3 verses 1 to 5 shows us a checklist of what it will become in these last days. It says, for people will only love themselves and their money. They will become boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. It sounds a bit like the world today, yes? Mm. They will be unloving and unforgiving. They will slander others that have no self-control. They will be cruel and they'll hate what is good. Mm. They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up with pride and love pleasure rather than God. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that could make them godly. What does the Bible say? Stay away from people like that. This is truth. This is called preparation. I don't know if many of you have ever heard of a man called Torben Sondergaard. Does anyone know who this man is? Okay, I've been following him for, for quite a while. His story is quite, quite interesting and unique. He was brought up in church and I think he even taught and ministered in church but he knew that that picture of what churchianity was looks nothing like the Bible okay so he fought against that religious system he fought against that religious system he understood he really understood the need to make disciples and do what Jesus commanded so he started a center in Denmark that trained 30 disciples from all different nations to go and spread the message of Jesus all around the world. Now these people learned discipleship, so they operated in the power of God. It wasn't a form of Christianity. It was one that was backed with the power of God, which meant they lay hands on the sick, they cast out demons, they spoke in different tongues. Now when Denmark saw what was happening, they... They said all sorts of nasty things about him and they hired media and we see this um, with other servants of God. Whenever you start doing something powerful for the kingdom of God, mm. be expected there is an enemy that will try to squash that and stop it and, and bring it down. Amen? But the government forced the media to spread all kinds of lies to stop him from preaching the gospel. And he claimed it, they claimed that he wasn't being inclusive that he was being offensive, and when they were casting out demons, that it was abuse. Um, but we know that that's all lies. Mm. This, in turn, forced him to leave the country. And in 2019, with his family, like refugees, they moved to America. They carried eight suitcases with everything that they had, or as much as they could carry. The kingdom of God suffers violence, yes? And who takes it by force? The violent take it by force. We're just going to watch a clip. Go. Yeah. One night I look up in the air and say, come on, there must be more than just go to a church and sit there two hours every Sunday and listen to somebody preaching. And at one time I started to just read the book of Acts, read about the first Christians, how they were living. They were not just sitting in a church every Sunday and listening to a sermon. They saw how life got changed where they came. We know Constantine, he came and he turned Christianity into a state religion. We see through, through church history that this hierarchy this institutionalized church was following us all the way to the Reformation when Luther came, Calvin came, Swinging came. They were trying to reform, they were trying to bring us back to the real gospel, back to the book of Acts. But they failed. Jesus said, go out and make disciples of all nations. God's given us the same authority and the same power that Jesus himself had in the first century. The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers, I really think 
that when the church comes back to a true gospel, repent, turn to Christ, be baptized for the remission of your sins, die with Christ and rise with Christ and be filled with the Holy Spirit that will change this world. It's time to go back to what we read in the book of Acts. I was walking like this. Okay. I couldn't move any faster. What you can do now? <laughs> the Bible is the book of life. It doesn't become the book of life by studying it. It becomes the book of life by living it. You know this healing happened how? By the power of Jesus. There's freedom. There's freedom. I was tired of looking for answers. I could not find it anywhere. Was that was awesome. That's crazy amazing. From the beginning to the end. Me and Laura and I were just saying, shall we pray that we see a sign in the sky when we get baptised? I turned and I, I looked up and uh, I saw real written in the sky. is actually moving across the globe right now. And this is just the beginning. We need a new reformation of the church. We need a last reformation. And that has truly changed my life. And now I preach that message until the day I die. Amen. Amen. It's inspiring, but that's what that's what the life of a believer looks like. It's for every single person. It's not just for one man. Mm. Uh, America was touched by the commission given to this man who took Jesus' command. So America was really touched. It spread throughout all of America. Baptism, repentance, uh, the infilling of the Holy Spirit. That wasn't just something that was being made by confession, but there was an encounter with the real God of the Bible. Uh, the same Jesus Christ. They met the same Jesus Christ who has the power to set the captives free. Amen. Now, the reason why I want to share with you Torben's story, because this is the reality for most believers where we're heading. Mm -hmm. So Torben moved in great power, in great authority, mm -hmm. because his heart is convicted of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. He knows what his conviction is. Mm -hmm. And I just want to share another clip like of a powerful baptism it doesn't go for too long. Thank you, Theo. Thank you. 
This is beautiful. And this is what she said is so strong. Now I understand. I understand what repentance is. I understand what baptism is. When you have that understanding of the criminal baptism, and then you do it, it's powerful. It's going to change your life. Amen. Amen. So beautiful to start. So good. So good. So the real Jesus Christ sets people free. And we had six baptisms in our church like on Saturday. And we had so many testimonies on, on Sunday and it was just so beautiful, like freedom from, there was one person that got free from the occult, another one was free from pornography. Like the power of God is real. We don't do it in our own strength. God has given us his spirit. But when we get an understanding, there's power. Amen? Amen. Oh, and did you see the excitement on his face? Like, just, <laughs> oh, it's so beautiful. So beautiful. So. Torben was doing this in America and training up people, making disciples who would make disciples, um, which is what we're all meant to be doing, right? Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until he started actually coming up against the government with the whole COVID scandal thing, and he declared that this was a socialist agenda. So he's bold, he doesn't care, like he'll just call it as it is. And this is what the Lord gives us, like a boldness. This is what we're going to need in these end times, a boldness to be able to say things for what they truly are. Um, he said that the media use it to control people, yeah, and put fear into people to change the laws. So while they were doing all of this, they were changing laws to take away your freedom. Mm. And it's not. It was never about a virus. And this is what Torben came out and he said. He said, this is about the end times. It's about control. It's about fear. And it's about manipulation. It's fake news. Amen? Amen? Whose report will you believe? We have to know the voice of God. We've got to know the word of God and surrender and submit and yield to the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. So good. In June 2022, Torben Sondergaard was arrested. He was detained. He was sent to prison for no crime committed. This is a portion of a letter that he wrote to the churches. To us, He said, Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, I have learned so much about suffering and the importance of endurance. So you saw how strong he was in his faith. But then this is the other side of it, where there is persecution. Mm. Physically, he says, I've lost 40 pounds, 18 kilos. Emotionally, I'm learning to live the importance of living by the Spirit and not by our feelings. We need to walk by faith and nothing else. That is a, a word for the church tonight. You need to walk by faith and nothing else. Spiritually, he said, it's truly time for the church to come back to the true gospel. We read the early church was living. He said, I felt a love for the entire body of Christ that I've never felt before. We need one another. We are not enemies. Just because we go to different denominations, we are not enemies enemies we all serve jesus christ even though sometimes we may see things differently amen in the letter he explained how god was using them in the cell for the inmates he said the holy spirit was giving the inmates dreams and one particular inmate was a 62 year old man who didn't know anything about jesus or baptism but he had a dream of a black snake and it ca that came to him in his dream he saw himself picking up a rock and crushing its head. He said the very next day when he called his wife, his wife had the exact same dream that same night. And then Torben, it gave Torben an opportunity to share the gospel. This is what the Lord is going to start doing. Because we don't have a lot of time, the Lord is going to open up opportunities where you can speak into people's life. The Bible says that all creation awaits for the revealing of the sons of God. This, yes? Mm -hmm. Amen. And he's in us. So a lot of the time, we'll be placed in certain situations in work areas, in our schools, in our families. And God's given us the very answer that they're looking for. 
now is not a time to shrink back or to, sh to be shy. Now is the time to step out and speak what you've got on the inside. Amen. Amen. Torben said that he repented, this old man repented and he got baptized and he was immediately filled with the Holy Spirit. He said it was so beautiful. They, they didn't have like full immersion over there so they had to put water over his head. And he said the Holy Spirit came over him in a powerful way. He fell down and he got free, filled with the Holy Spirit, crying and praising God. Lives were being transformed in that prison as other inmates were seeing what was going on. It's funny like how the enemy meant to do it for evil, mm. but God turns it around and works it for good. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Nothing is lost when it's put in the hands of God. Yes. Uh, Tobin said, we don't, he goes, but we don't just want people to convert. Jesus wants true disciples. Amen? Mm. They need to be they need to be ready to repent and to follow Christ with what? With everything. It's a life that is all in, sold out. Amen. Amen. So often he said we're compromising and we're making it too easy. And we don't see the transforming power of the gospel. The world needs to see a transformed life. And he said, many people have tried religion, but that, that hasn't changed their life. So now they need the whole gospel, the truth and nothing else. We cannot be afraid to give them the truth gospel, Amen. which is Jesus Christ alive. And he should be seen in us. Amen. Amen. He said, I truly believe that we are on the verge of a major expansion in the kingdom of God like never before. But also that persecution will come to the body like never before. Be strong. Follow Jesus with everything in you. God wants to do much greater things through all of us. Love and greetings to you all in the name of Jesus. Torben was released from prison only a month ago. He ended up being locked up for 412 days. Even though he was doing the work of God prior, it didn't stop him from going to prison. Amen. And he has come out of this a truly transformed man. I just want you to see what he's like now. This is just taken not that long ago. When uh, when we experienced the prosecution first in Denmark, uh, it, it came as a surprise that something could happen in that level, and it came very very fast. Um, then I remember when I was sitting in the airport in the Netherlands and I was flying to America. It, it came very strong to me that prosecution is also coming to America. And it had been a message I've been sharing the last years. I've been in America, like wake up, <laughs> persecution are coming to America. And I, I feel really strong now that God has not only given me a message, but somehow he's helping me to become the message, to help, to prepare the church, to get away with a lot of other amazing people out there who are waking up, because there's many people who are awake right now, and there's, Many people who are preaching the same message I'm preaching and I'm thankful for it and, and, and we just need each other and we need to stand up and, and it's happening and it's happening now. And I think the biggest thing is that it, it will come as a surprise for most people because we are not aware of it. We accept it in other countries, but not in our own, <laughs> not where we are or not now or not me. We still think it's only for the few extremes. It's only for, for those few people out there and, and somehow we think we are, we are safe as long as we don't do what, what they're doing. And no, you're not safe. Not if you really follow Christ. And God showed me in there that right now, yes, it's only the few, but very soon it will be the many but it will end up as the Bible had promised and be everyone who confess Jesus as Lord. And we really need to wake up there and we should not close our eyes and shut our ears up and hope that it just go away and it disappear because it's not going to go away. It's, it's not going to disappear. But we should learn, learn how to deal with it. And, and, and I can say very short, when, when I came to prison the first month, I was depressed. I was not, I was not doing good. It was it was very, very hard and I I was just not prepared for it. But then God really 
start to deal with me and there was things I needed to learn and it really changed it a lot and I became strong. And I just want to say I'm, I'm somehow thankful I did not come out just after a month because then I would come out and put fear in every one of you out there who was me and say, be, be afraid, stop doing what you're doing, be afraid because this is terrible. But instead I can come out and say, it is coming, it's not going to go away. We cannot just close our eyes and shut off our ears and think it will just disappear. It's here and it's here to come and it's going to get worse. But I have good news. God is faithful and Jesus is with us and we can learn that suffering and persecution is not our enemy, it's actually God's way of dealing with us and making us strong. Suffering and persecution is not the enemy. It's God's way of dealing with us. So when you go through just the simple things in life, rejection from those that love you, relationships that fail, um, promises that seem to be unfulfilled, whatever it is, hardships, the Lord wants us to be trained in those areas, that our conviction doesn't change, that we're not moved by anything that's external, that we are only moved by the sound of his voice. Amen. That's what preparation means. That's that's where the Lord is bringing us. Amen. Um, things will rapidly change on this earth. He said it, and I know a lot of you believe it, even though sometimes we try to hide from it and go, no, no, not yet, God. I'm still too young. I've still got a lot of things to do. But the Lord is like, I'm preparing you and I'm training you up for what's to come. But don't be afraid because you're not doing this on your own, in your own strength. Remember remember Stephen? Remember, oh, I love the boldness of Stephen. He proclaimed and declared everything from Genesis all the way up to Jesus. And it incited anger over those that persecuted him. But the Bible says when they were stoning him, that his face became lit up because he saw the glory of God. This is our strength, guys, that we have him. We're not doing this on our own. Now, my sister is like, how many of you guys know my sister's getting married in two weeks? Hey. She's getting married on the 7th of October. It's less than, it's about two weeks. But as soon as that date was set, man, she was like, all right, sick. I've got to organise the makeup artist. I'm like, get ready. <laughs> I've got to get the hairdresser. I need an MC. Yeah, film. Thank you very much. <laughs> Music, <laughs> catering, the venue. Da da da. She was not idle, guys. The wedding date was set, and she went into full preparation. Mm. She wanted everybody prepared, even us. Like, we've got to organise from now how to get my mum to the venue, right? Yeah. We've got to organise who's going to dress her. We've got to organise like our things. We have to be prepared. We know the word of God tells us that this is coming upon us. We have to be prepared. Luke 12, 35 says, Be dressed for service and keep your lamps burning as though you were waiting for your master to return from the wedding feast. Then you will be ready to open the door and let him in the moment he arrives and knocks. Jesus told us to look at the signs, not to scare us. To hear a word like this tonight, not to be scared, but to be prepared. Luke 12, 54 says, And Jesus turned to the crowd and he said, When you see the clouds beginning to form in the west, you will say, Here comes a shower, and you are right. When the south wind blows, you say, Today will be a scorcher, and it is, you fools. You know how to interpret the weather signs of the earth and the sky, but you don't know how to interpret the present times. Mm. Torben was right about COVID being a precursor. It was an agenda. And the media used fear to control millions of people. Freedom was taken. It was never about a virus. It was the way the enemy was using to gaslight millions through fake news. And the church needs to wake up. And the Lord showed me this. There are two great calamities that are going to hit this earth. Two great calamities. What we went through with COVID was nothing. And in this time, while, while there is another lockdown and another pandemic, whatever they're going to use, 
they will change the whole financial system. It's already planned. It's, we can see it in the book of Revelation. This is where we're headed. And the Lord wants us to be prepared because you know when it happens, it's going to be suddenly, how many of you were ready to be locked down with COVID? None of us were. And you know how many people today are still struggling with the effects of it, whether it's because of sicknesses, whether it's because of anxiety, anxiety, suicide, depression. There is so much, so much. But the Lord wants us to be prepared because it's coming. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Whose report will you believe? No matter what we face, guys, no matter what comes upon this earth, we've got to remember Jesus doesn't change. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's promised that he's taking us with him mm. where he is that that we would also be amen so many were threatened they even lost their jobs through COVID because of their personal convictions what is your conviction your preparation first and foremost is to truly know our preparation do you know what your preparation means to remember why did you say yes to Jesus that's your preparation mm. if you can get an understanding of that then you'll be able to overcome. You know, recently the Lord revealed to me, um, see, when the whole COVID thing came out, I just felt off in the spirit. I don't know, did anyone else feel like something was off? Yeah. I thought, man, like, they're going through a lot of, like, pushing to make people do this, and I don't like to be pushed. God doesn't push us, you know? It's like, I'm not going to do this. And I remember losing so many friends. Like, people just turned. I was like, why is everyone caring about... And I had people that were of faith who said, well, you know, if your mum dies, it's your fault. And I'm like, this is fear. And so I was like, I'm not going to do it. I stood against it and I felt... I got cocky. I was like, wow, I was one of the ones that didn't do it. Da, da, da. But I just found out recently that the same reason why people did get vaccinated and those ones that didn't get vaccinated was all stemmed off fear. Right? Whether you did or you didn't, doesn't matter. Like whether you had faith for it or you didn't, that wasn't the problem. It was the conviction. My conviction wasn't Jesus Christ. It was like, I don't want no poison in me, you know? And I recently found out that if that's the conviction, you'll be the first one to get the mark of a beast because it's fear. Amen? So we've got to remember why we said yes to Jesus and that will be our only focus. Amen? Amen. Amen. Revelations 2.10 says, Do not fear what you're about to suffer. Behold, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested. And for ten days you will have tribulation. But be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. Be faithful unto what? This is how they overcame. They overcame by the blood of the Lamb, the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto death. But it comes in through being prepared in your heart. Conviction, I'm all in, God. If they take everything else, it doesn't matter as long as I end up with you. In these last few weeks, I've seen many brothers and sisters who've gone through some pretty bad trials. And most have felt weak. I even went through something as well where I was like, I was crying out to God, God, just take me. Like it hurts. It hurts so much. My heart can't endure this pain anymore. And I was like, man, it wasn't even bad. <laughs> it's like, wow, and things are going to get worse. And I was like, right, I need to be strengthened in the spirit. <laughs> but it's a good reality check. How many of you be like, yeah, we get these reality checks. Yes, amen. And it's good. This is God's mercy revealing that we need to be in preparation. So how will we possibly stand in that day if lesser things are taking us out? I want us to be ready to come. And like this next portion of scripture, all right, it blessed me so much. I want you to walk away and get an understanding. Like what Torben said, if you can get an understanding, it will keep you. So it's taken from Exodus 3. And it says, One day Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led the flock far into the wilderness and came to Sinai, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire from the middle of a bush. Moses stared in amazement, though the bush was engulfed in flames and didn't burn up. This is amazing, Moses said to himself. Why isn't that bush burning up? Oh, I must go and see it. 
verse 4. When the Lord saw Moses coming to take a closer look, God called to him from the middle of the bush, Moses, Moses, here I am, Moses replied. Do not come any closer, the Lord warned. Take off your sandals, for you are standing on holy ground. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, God, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. When Moses heard this, he covered his face because he was afraid to look at God. Verse 7, Then the Lord told him, I have certainly seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I have heard their cries of distress because of their half-slave drivers. Yes, I am aware of their suffering, so I have come down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians and lead them out of Egypt into their own fertile and spacious land. It is a land flowing with milk and honey, the land where the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, the Jebusites now live. Look, the cry of the people of Israel had reached me, and I've seen how harshly the Egyptians abused them. Now go, for I'm sending you to Pharaoh. You must lead my people Israel out of Egypt. And verse 11 says, But Moses protested to God. Who am I to appear before Pharaoh? Who am I to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt? And can we say this together? God answered, Who am I, Lord? Who am I, Lord, that I will be the one that does this? And how did God answer him? Your identity is in him. Amen. But Moses protested, if I go to the people of Israel and tell them the God of your ancestors has sent me to you, they will ask me, what is his name? Then what should I tell them? God replied to Moses, let's say it together. I am who I am. Have you got it? Yeah, verse 40. I am who I am. Say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, say this to the people of Israel, Yahweh, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. Who shall I say has sent me? I am. Wow. So who, who am I? I'm with you. Who sent me? I am. <laughs> it's pretty simple. If we can get an understanding of this, there is nothing that will shake your faith. Amen? Amen. This is my eternal name. My name to remember for all generations. He's everything to every person. He's anything that you ever need. He is omnipotent. He is all-powerful. He's omnipresent, which means he is everywhere. He is omniscient. He means I'm all-knowing. He is gracious. He's merciful. He's compassionate. He's kind. He's infinite. He's self-existing, he's immutable, it means he doesn't stop speaking, unchanging, wise, faithful, good, just, holy, gracious, self-sufficient. I am is love. So when you're going through those things, you've got I am. So you've got all of that. It's amazing. Hard times are coming and only this revelation of this truth will keep you protected from those testing trials that are coming. If you don't know him intimately in your heart, your heart will become offended with God. And how many people see Christians that become offended with God? Yes? Eh, yes. Get wisdom, get understanding, guys. It's time to get oil. If anyone here is currently in a trial, struggling with your faith, and all kinds of adversity has come into your home, fear not. It's God's mercy. That, expo that is exposing where you're weak. There may be things that you have allowed to come in and to take that conviction of first love. Repent. Change the way that you think. That's all that repentance is, is change that way of thinking and start and believe like that he is, I am. There is no point binding the enemy in this place. God is doing a work in you and he's revealing something to you. Mm. And you know what? Some things that we sit there and fighting and warfaring in, in the spiritual realm, it's not even the enemy that we're fighting, we're fighting God. Yes? Let's go into Isaiah. I think this is really interesting. He says, What sorrow awaits my rebellious children, saith the Lord. You make plans that are contrary to mine. You make alliances that aren't directed by my spirit, thus piling up sins. For without consulting me, you've gone down to Egypt for help. So Egypt is a form of the world. You've put your trust in Pharaoh's protection. You've tried to hide in his shade. But by trusting in Pharaoh, in trusting in this world, what does he say? You will be humiliated. 
and by depending on him, you will be disgraced. If you are experiencing chaos, calamity, all sorts of adversity, then somewhere you have chosen in your life to seek counsel outside of God's voice. Ten says, they tell the seers, stop seeing visions. They tell the prophets, don't tell us what's right. Just tell us nice things, tell us lies, forget about all of this gloom. Get off your narrow path. Stop telling us about your Holy One of Israel. Don't tell us about the end days. Don't tell us that lawlessness will continue. Don't tell us that Christians are going to be persecuted. We don't want to hear that stuff. But this is the reply of the Holy One of Israel. Because you despise what I tell you and trust instead in oppression and lies, calamity will come upon you suddenly. Like a bulging wall that bursts and falls, in an instant it will collapse and come crashing down. You will be smashed like a piece of pottery, shattered so completely that there won't be a piece big enough to carry coals from a fireplace or a little water from a well. Verse 15, this is what the Sovereign Lord, the Holy One of Israel says, only in, can we say it together, only in returning to me and resting in me will you be saved. Amen. He is a good God. He doesn't want us in chaos and calamity. But it's his love that puts that on us. Amen? Because what does he want to do? He wants us to come to him because he is the refuge. He is the strong tower. He is the safe place. Egypt and Pharaoh never was. Amen? Amen. Perilous times are coming. What is your conviction? Verse 18. So the Lord must what? The Lord must wait. The Lord waits for us to come to him so he can show us what? His love and his compassion. For the Lord is a faithful God. Blessed are those who wait for his help. O people of Zion who live in Jerusalem, you will weep no more. He will be gracious if what? If you ask for help, he will surely respond to the sound of your cries. He wants your heart. He's always wanted your heart. Because he knows when he has your heart, then you have been kept safe. And verse 20 says, And though the Lord gives you what? The Lord gives you the bread of adversity. Stop finding those demons. When God's giving you something, you can pray as much as you want. It's not going away. The Lord gives you the bread of adversity and what? And the water of affliction. Yet your teacher will not hide himself anymore. But your eyes will constantly behold your teacher. There's a promise. Amen. Verse 21, and your ears will hear a word behind you saying, this is the way walking. Has ever, anyone ever experienced that? Where you're trying to walk in a different path that you know God's not in and you just try whatever and the Lord's speaking and says, hey, come here, turn around. That place is not good for you. Come and follow me. Amen. That's what he says. Your ears will hear a word behind you saying, this is my way walking it. Then you turn to the right hand, and when you turn to the left, my sons are those who are led by my spirit. And when you have turned back to him, then when you turn back to him, verse 22 says, then you will defile your carved images overlaid with silver and molten images plated with gold. From the bottom being silver to the top being gold, anything that has been distracting you from him, he will have no God before him. He is a jealous God. Mm. It could be a relationship. It could be a desire to be married. It could be about a job. But who cares? Who cares about any of this stuff? Just love him. Amen? Amen. It's all that matters. When you put him above everything else, when you seek him first, when you seek the kingdom of God, what does it say? All these things shall be added unto you. Some of our images are even our destiny. My pastor was talking about this. You're so fixated on, on what's ahead. But concentrate on the journey with him now. Fall in love with him. Is he going to? Will he do this? He's waiting for you. But it is for you, God. I'm doing this for you, God. I'm, I'm running this ministry. I'm, I'm going to this country and I'm da da da. Wait on him. Silver and gold. He says, you will cast them away as a filthy blood-stained cloth and you will say to them, be gone. Wow, that's conviction. Amen? That's conviction. That's what the Lord wants. 
because it will keep you safe in the days that are coming ahead. He is so patient. He is so kind. He will continue, because of his patience and his kindness and his mercy, he'll continue to give bread of adversity. That's so that punishment is like, rejoice. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you for the bread. He did it with David. David was anointed well back. Yes, with oil. Years passed with David running from Saul. Adversity sobers us up to a point that only that which matters, matters. Those people, when you get that understanding, when you get that conviction, you become dangerous because you don't really care about what the enemy can threaten you with. They're just glad that God gets the glory. Bread of increase. You want bread of increase? You want blessings to come? This comes in for those people who are not in it for themselves. And God can trust them. Verse 23 says, Then he will give you rain for the seed with which you sow the soil and bread grain from the produce of the ground. And it will be what? Rich and plentiful. In that day your cattle will feed in large pastures. It's such a blessing, guys, to just be in the hands of God. Amen? Amen? In the hands of God. Verse 24. The oxen and the donkeys that till the ground will eat good grain. It's chaff blown away by the wind. In that day when your enemies are slaughtered and the towers fall, there will be streams of water. Listen to the abundance of blessing. Streams of water flowing down every mountain and hill. The moon will be as bright as the sun and the sun will be seven times brighter. Like the light of seven days in one, so it will be. Let's say this together. So it will be when the Lord begins to heal his people and cure the wounds. Ooh, who gave them? Well, he gave them. The Lord is the one that delegates adversity and then he binds up their wounds. Wow, he's a pretty amazing God. <laughs> but he does it for our goodness. It's for good. Galatians 6, 7 says, oh, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. God is not mocked. There is nothing that you can sow that the Lord does not see. Amen? Amen. Amen. Who am I to lead the people of Israel out of Egypt? Who am I to speak? Who am I to be salt and light in this dark world? Who am I in the midst of this coming persecution? Who am I, Lord? God answers, I'll be with you. Your identity is in him. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in this world. You have the life of God living inside of you. No weapon formed, fashioned or shaped against you will prosper. Amen. Every lying tongue, every false accusation, everything will fall down because the Lord will condemn it. This is our heritage as his servants. Amen. Amen. No disease will afflict you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. No disease will afflict your body. I don't care what pandemic they come up with next. No disease will afflict your body. No fear will overcome you. I don't care what they do with our finances. No financial adversity will harm you. The Lord is faithful, I am. The Christian is not subject to being a victim. We're not victims of some sort of crazy experimentation. We receive power after the Holy Spirit comes upon us. Amen. Amen. Don't forget who you are. Judges 6.34 says, So the Spirit of the Lord covered Gideon like clothing, and he blew a trumpet, and the Abbezerites were called together to follow him. You know what? That says that the Spirit of God put Gideon on like a glove. That means wherever I go, the Spirit of God is the one that's moving and working in me. Mm. When he gets me to speak to someone, I don't have to worry about what I'm going to have to say. Because the Spirit of God will speak through me. When I lay hands on the sick, I don't have to worry whether they're going to get healed or not. It's the Spirit of God. He's the one that will do it in us. For I've given you power, love, and a sound mind. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. What about the arrows, God? The arrows of depression, of anxiety. 
of despondency, of hopelessness and heaviness, they will not prosper. They will not prosper. Isaiah 61 3 says that when the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, He provides for those who grieve in Zion to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes, the oil of joy instead of mourning, and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. The only antidote to this spirit of he- it's a spirit. The only antidote to the spirit of depression and heaviness and oppression is a garment of praise. Even if you don't feel like praising him, praise him. That's how you get the victory. Amen. It's a garment. Hallelujah. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. The garment of praise. You will make it, guys. You will produce what the Lord has said you will do. Creation longs with anticipation for sons and daughters to arise. Amen. And as the world gets darker, only those who know their God will do amazing exploits. They will be light and they will bring hope. What must we do? What must we do in the now? Do everything you possibly can to fall in love with him. Fall more in love with him. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Disciples, I think you guys could bear witness with this confession. I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. I will not look up, let up, slow down. I won't back up, turn back or sit still. I don't have to be right. I don't have to be first. I don't even have to be recognized. I don't have to be praised, regarded or rewarded. My pace is set. My gaze is fast. My goal is heaven. My road is narrow. My way is rough. My companions are few. My guide is reliable. My mission is clear. I cannot be bought. I cannot be compromised, deterred, nor away, deluded, or delayed. I will not give up, let up, back up, or shut up until I have preached up, prayed up, and sought up, and stayed up the cause of Christ. I must go until he returns. I must not give up, not even if I drop. I must preach until the whole world knows. And I must work until he comes. And when he comes back for his own, he will have no trouble recognizing me because my life has been made pure. My conviction is sure. I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen? amen. Romans 1.16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Mm. Who am I? Who am I, Lord? To lead anyone to you, especially in this day and hour, God answers, I will be with you. If I go to the people and they tell, ask me, who sent you? What's his name? What should I tell them? God replied, tell them I am. God is in the now. The only moment that matters to you is now. Because he is I am. And guys, we need to walk out of here living in the I am. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. That's the word for tonight. I hope that you were encouraged. I hope that, that you remember this word and that you remember those two things. I am with you and I am that I am. Irregardless of what you will have to face, whether it's in your family, the things that you go through in your family, they're just tests. They're just to strengthen you. Okay? They're just strengthening tools. Mm -hmm. But the Lord is with us. He will not leave us to do this in our own strength. I'm going to ask the girls to just start playing some music. Can you you guys come up? And as we have this song play, I think we can just come before the Lord and ask the Spirit of God to just fill us afresh with His Holy Spirit because we need the power of God. Mm. We need the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Come before Him boldly because, guys, you cannot do this in your own strength. Sons to get up 
empty positions. There's no more room for procrastination. We must rise. Creation grows with anticipation for sons to get up and take positions. There's no more room for procrastination. We Assemble the highest now. 